uh, in the Misery Loves uh, Company Department. Let me bring Senator Marco Rubio into the uh, into the fold. Let me tell you something. If an if an insignificant guy like a radio talk show host gets called every name in the book, I can only imagine what your email inbox looks like. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. <laughs> Welcome back. Look, I, I think that we need to understand many of the people that are upset are people we work with on every other issue. That's right. The size of government, et cetera. And there is a very vibrant debate, and I hope it will continue to be a respectful one and to the extent that uh, people want to keep it that way. Certainly it will be from my part within the conservative movement about what our position should be on immigration reform. I'll, I'll tell you very bluntly about what my interest in this has been. Number one, I, I personally can't ignore it. I live surrounded by immigrants in, my, in the neighborhood I live in. Every one of my neighbors is an immigrant or a first generation American. So I am inundated by immigration all around me, which allows me to see all the good parts of immigration reform, of immigration and what a benefit and blessing it's been to our country. By the way, I also see the bad of illegal immigration and how people have taken advantage of the generosity of this country. And so, um, and I'll give you anecdotal stuff. I mean, I don't have research on this per se, but I can just tell you that the, I have seen people criticize the United States that come here from abroad and they say, oh, this country's no good, or they complain about it. And the people who get angriest when they hear that are immigrants. That's right. The yeah. fact, I've often heard them say to those folks, well, then why don't you go back? Or why don't, Again, I'm not saying that's the way we should respond to people per se, because this is a free country and people are allowed to criticize whatever they no, want. No, but so many immigrants crave what America has to offer. and They, they know what it's like to live somewhere else. I, I, and I, that I, means I, you don't take this for granted. That's right. You so, know, let, let, let me talk, let, let's do two positive things first. I mean, first okay. of all, uh, I, I am. You are winning me over over by, by, by your assertion that the status quo and doing nothing is amnesty, is de facto amnesty. Right. And I think that's a great point. I mean, yesterday a lot of people were calling and yelling at me, saying we need to deport them all, we need to send them all back. Uh, we can't give. It. And and you know we know how impractical that impractical that is. We know that's not possible. We know it's never going to happen. So instead of wasting time and stomping our feet and saying what we wish would happen. And I don't like the presence of 12 million illegal immigrants in America. I wish they had, they did what my grandparents did and immigrated here legally. I wish they would have obeyed the law, but they didn't. Now what do we do with them? And, and so when you say, and if you can expand on this for a minute, Senator, when you say doing nothing and maintaining the status quo is really the true amnesty, right. tell us what you mean by that. Well, first of all, so you have 11 million people. You have three problems. You have a legal immigration system that doesn't work. You have 11 million people that are here illegally, and they've been here for a decade or longer, most of them, the vast majority of them. And then the third problem is you don't have enforcement mechanisms to keep people coming in in the future illegally. So you have three big problems, and you've got to deal with all three of them. If you leave it the way it is, which is what's going to happen if immigration reform fails, all you have is what we have today getting worse. That's what you have. Right. So we have to. So let's talk about the 11 million for a second. If you want it, it, there is no way to round up and deport 11 million people without two things happening. Number one, some very sad humanitarian stories that I think the American public will, will not support. And number two, you can't round up 11 million people and deport them without rounding up millions of others who are not deportable in the process. In essence, you can't, you, you can't do it. So that would be a civil libertarian problem as well. So that's the second point is, all right, then what do we do with it? What can we do about it? And the answer is we figure out a way to re deal with the reality that we have that's the result of mistakes that have been made in the past. These are people that are already here. But we only do that if, number one, there are strict conditions to it, like uh, learning English, paying taxes, uh, passing a background check, uh, paying a fine and fee of having to wait behind everybody else who's done it the right way. And number two, and this is the critical one we're going to have a fight over moving forward, we have to make sure that if we're going to allow 11 million people or some subset thereof to legally stay in the country, that this never happens again. Mm -hmm. We cannot have this replaced by another wave of illegal immigration. All right, let's, we so do let's, nothing, that's going to happen. So let's go down that path. Let me give you some challenges here that, that I'm hearing I know you've heard repeatedly, and I want you to address the op the other side of this the the, okay. the, the, the let's talk let, maybe the bill crystal uh, you know point of view let me let, let's start with him for a moment he says and and Newt Gingrich uh, who 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 I admire very much has shared this with me anything that has comprehensive in front of it run from comprehensive it doesn't get done focus on one thing at a time bill crystal basically argues focus on e verify as one bill focus on border security as another bill let's do what we can while we can what what, what do you say to those those conservative Republicans who argue that, that anything comprehensive is a bad idea? Well, first of all, that was my initial preference and remains that way, by the way, if we can do it that way. The, the problem with it is that this issue is a comprehensive issue. They're all intertwined. All of these issues, all these separate subsets 
all related to one another. So, for example, if you have 11 million people in the country that are illegally here, and you say, if you, as most of these folks that are saying, I get it, we can't deport them, we've got to somehow allow them to figure out a way to, to in, in, ingrain themselves into American society if they're not criminals and they're willing to work hard, but then you also fully implement E-Verify, you're going to have a problem because all these people that are illegally here in the meantime are not going to be able to work right. if your E-Verify works. Right. So now what do you do? You don't allow them to go on welfare because we can't and we're not going to. You don't allow them to work because they can't pass E-Verify. So then what do they do? And what are you going to do with the humanitarian stories that come out of that and the reality of it? All right, let me, and, get, let me give you another challenge. Let's talk about the political component of this. I hear this a lot. Doesn't Marco Rubio, doesn't Mike Gallagher, don't you, don't you guys realize you're basically going to be, to be legitimizing 11 million dem- votes for the Democrat Party? Well, number one, to me, that's a concession that somehow there's this group of people in America that all of them will never, ever see our way of thinking, that we can never convince. And I would just say that if the conservative movement cannot convince people to support it or a significant percentage of people to support it, we're we're doomed anyway. I mean, politics is always about convincing people that your principles are the right ones for them. The second point I would make is most of the people that are discussing that are assuming that all 11 million of the people that are here are Hispanics that live in liberal communities. Now, uh, granted, if you are someone who has come into this country and you live in a community surrounded by liberals, your liberal inclinations are probably stronger. But there are millions of people, number one, that didn't come from Latin American countries. In essence, they're ascribing to them things that aren't accurate in terms of their political leanings. And number two, that live in places like Florida and Texas and Ohio and North Carolina and Virginia, who have proven in elections after elections that they're much more open to our message, that they're much more open to the message of conservatism and upward mobility. So I, I just don't think that that is, number one, something that should drive us in this issue, and number two, and I don't think that's how you make immigration policy, by the way, and number two, I just don't think it's true. I just refuse to concede that there are this enormous swath of Americans out there who, because of their heritage and because of where they come from, will never ever support conservative principles. I don't just think that's not true. I absolutely know well, that you, that's Well, you've not lived true. it because you, you, you come from, from a, a, a background that, that, that knows the Hispanic culture. And, I, and I'm with you in terms of uh, one of my great frustrations as an American is that, frankly, the Republican Party is far better suited, I think, uh, to 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 Latino and Latina Americans than 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 the Democrats are. Well, and if you look at the hopes and dreams of immigrant communities, their desire is to improve themselves in life, to start a much more entrepreneurial than yep. the general population. So these are small business owners. Yep. These are people that are looking to get ahead in life. Th- their natural inclinations in that regard should be for us. Now, maybe we have failed as a movement to convince people that that's what we're about because right. some Republicans who claim to be conservatives haven't been about that. Right. But, but that just means we have to do a better job, and I, well, I think we can. I will tell you this, Senator Marco Rubio. You come on every time we invite you on. You're, you're, you're very transparent over this. You've had, you've an- you answer every tough question about this. There's a great myth versus fact page on your website that we've posted on our Facebook fan page. Uh, I, I so admire you getting in front of this. We'll see what happens because, again, you remember, I'm taking it for the team. When they're calling me Rhino and Trader and Benedict Arnold, my only solace is knowing you must be getting it worse than me, so I feel better. Well, bottom line is we're going to make this bill better, and in particular when it comes to border security, yes, we're sir. not going to just leave this in the hands of the Department of Homeland Security. We can't. We're going to do something real, or, or I don't think this bill can become a law. Senator Marco Rubio, appreciate you joining us again here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Thank you.